Tonight, I'm gonna to show you six tools that I regret buying. You do not need these. The first one is the belt sander. When I first got this tool, I was planning on using it to smooth out a large tabletop that I had made. However, as I started working with it and as I started using it, I realized that this sander was making marks in the table. It was smoothing out some of the high spots, but it was making it so I had to do another step to go back and sand to clean up the sander marks. Even with a light grit, belt sanders take off a lot of material and they're kind of hard to control. They gouge, they move, they bite. Unless you're trying to use this for some reason to sand like a quarter inch off of something and so you're just gonna go to town and you want it to eat up material, that may work. Otherwise, it's not a good idea. A better option is to use a random orbital sander. Now these are great because they move in a random pattern, they rotate, they take off plenty of material, and they don't leave marks. They're super smooth and they leave the surface really clean and you don't need that extra step. I don't think it's specific to the brand either. I think in terms of belt sanders, this rigid one is really good. However, it's just the type of tool, the category, that just doesn't work very well. The next one I wanna talk about is the pneumatic crown stapler. Now I got this early on in my woodworking career as part of a kit with other pneumatic nail guns as well. When I got this one, I tried it out, I put a couple staples in to see what it looked like, and I quickly realized that I did not want to use this, mainly because the hole that this leaves is a slot. It's big. With a nail gun, you have just the single nail. And so to me, that's why this is kind of a deal breaker because I don't want to have to have a huge hole to fill that's twice as wide as a nail or more. I have installed crown molding before and I just used a regular nail gun and it worked fine. The alternative to the crown stapler is just a normal nail gun. I have an 18 gauge, I have a 16 gauge, I have a pin nailer, which is I think a 22 gauge. Those are really versatile. And I've gotten to the point in my shop where I don't really hammer in nails anymore. I always use a nail gun or I'm using screws. So having a variety of nail guns is key. When I install trim in my house, I'm using a nail gun. When I'm doing small projects that I just wanna to put together quickly, nail gun is my go-to. I never use the crown stapler. I don't know why I still have it. The next tool that you don't need is a uh, one inch belt sander. Now, this is one that I didn't actually buy, this was given to me, and it has a very specific application. If you're making things that are very small and you need a very underpowered motor, this might be the sander for you. But I just find in my shop, it sits in the corner and gathers dust. Now, lest you think I have something against belt sanders, I do have a favorite belt sander. This is my rigid oscillating belt sander, and this one is great. I use this one all the time. Belt sanders work great when they're mounted somewhere, and the oscillating feature of this is awesome. It makes it so much more useful, and it makes it so I don't just burn lines in the sandpaper. This belt sander doubles as a spindle sander, and I'll be honest, I use it much more as a belt sander than a spindle sander. On the occasional inside curve where I really need to get in there, it's nice to be able to switch it out. I would not probably buy a dedicated spindle sander because it's such a rare instance where I would be using that. For any shaping on something that's small or intricate, this is the one I go to. This next one is a tool that got me so angry I have actually already gotten rid of it. I don't have one because I just threw it in the garbage. I was so upset. This is a protractor angle finder contraption that I thought would be a really cool idea and looked like a neat design. So I got one and I started using it and I quickly realized this does not work. This is not the right angle. I think it's probably about five bucks. And you can tell why, because it doesn't find the angle right, which to me, if it's called an angle finder, it should find the angle. Why is that so hard? It doesn't, it doesn't work. So I threw it away and I found something that works. And it's this, my Starrett angle finder. I've talked about this in many videos. I don't know why Starrett doesn't give me a commission at this point. It's awesome, it's accurate. I've done all kinds of work with it, done all kinds of complicated angles with it. I would highly recommend this over the yellow cheap one. This next one is a little bit hard for me to talk about because I knew going in that it was gonna to be a tool that I didn't use very often. That is my hollow chisel mortiser. I got this originally because I was doing a big table that had mortise and tenon joinery. Having the mortiser was a lifesaver for that project. And if you're doing something where you're doing a traditional mortise and tenon joint, this is something that's very useful. But I just find in my shop, I'm not doing a lot of that type of joinery. When I do, it comes in handy, but more often than not, I find it just kind of sits in my shop. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna sell it or get rid of it, because it still can drill square holes, which is just a cool concept. But I do regret a little bit buying it because I do have a small shop and it's taking up space. Instead of a mortiser, you can do all kinds of other joinery. Uh, there's dowel jigs that can do dowel joinery, which are just as strong as mortise and tenon. You can do half lap joints. 
You could buy one of the most controversial tools on YouTube, the Festool Domino. You could use the other most controversial thing on YouTube, pocket holes. All of those are good options and I think every joint has its place and its application. The next tool that I regret buying is just a cheap handsaw. This is something I think I got at one of the big box stores and I got it at the very beginning of my woodworking career because I said, hey, I need a saw. Everybody uses a saw. I got this and I used it and I got frustrated because when you're first learning how to do woodworking, it's very difficult to make a straight cut with this. And so I ended up just putting it on a shelf or hanging it up and didn't really use it that much. Hand saws are very useful in woodworking, but you have to buy the right one. I've found after using the cheap ones that in the same price range as that, you can get a Japanese saw and the Japanese pull saws are so much easier to cut a straight line with, I think. The way these work is they cut on the pull stroke instead of the push. The traditional American saws cut on the push stroke. That means that as you're cutting, you're digging in and you're starting to cut a new line every time. It can start walking off course. I wish I would have discovered these saws earlier because they're pretty cool. Now I want to hear what tools you guys regret buying. It doesn't have to be a big power tool, but if you have something that you thought was going to be an amazing tool and it ended up being a total failure, or you just never use it, let us know in the comments, tell me which tools you regret buying from your shop, and maybe we can all avoid some of the same mistakes. You guys are awesome, I have an awesome audience. Now, go build something, and we'll see you next time.